hand. So, Alicia Gilmore is a registered dietitian licensed in the state of Texas. She received her BS in nutrition in 1998 and her MS in nutrition in 2002 from Oklahoma State University, Stillwater, Oklahoma. She is currently supervisor of clinical nutrition at the University of Texas MD Anderson Cancer Center in Houston, Texas. Prior to joining MD Anderson, she was a clinical dietitian at the University of Texas Southwestern Medical Center, Simmons Cancer Center in Dallas. That's a long name. She is contributing author for Nutritional Care Manual Oncology, a member of the Cancer Survivorship Clinical Care Work Group, and a member of Enhanced Recovery in Liver Surgery at MD Anderson. Alicia is here today to speak with us about PBC and nutrition, one of the questions most frequently asked by newly diagnosed patients. Welcome, Alicia. Good afternoon, and thank you. <laughs> All right, wake up. So thank you for saving the best for last. Um, so today, um, let's see, uh, I was asked to talk about fad diets and PBC. So uh, we'll be talking about the paleo diet, which goes back to the, I'm afraid I'm going to drop it. All right, better? OK. We'll be talking about the paleo diet, which goes back to one of the questions that was asked earlier with Dr. Miller. Nightshade plants, anti-inflammatory diet, and then overall recommendations. So the first uh, diet I want to review is the paleo diet. How many of y'all are familiar with the paleo diet? So most of you. Really interesting. Um, so the whole idea of the paleo diet is to eat like our ancestors in the Paleolithic era which was a while ago. Um, you can only, on this diet, you can only choose foods that can be hunted or gathered. Um, and the whole idea behind this is that those who were hunter and gatherers um, fought off the effects of the modern diet, including diabetes, heart disease, obesity, and autoimmune disease. Um, so with the paleo diet, what's recommended is um, nuts and seeds, but only as many as you can actually sit and crack open. Um, healthy oils, coconut, avocado, olive oil, um, non-starchy vegetables, fresh fruits, but not a whole lot, because um, apparently in the Paleolithic era, the fruits were a lot smaller, so you're not supposed to eat as many. Um, nuts, uh, we talked about nuts and seeds. Um, and then only proteins that have a face. So that would be fish, fresh seafood, um, game, chicken, um, grass-fed beef and poultry, uh, free range. It's recommended that you not choose conventional um, and organ meats. Um, and then you can have eggs. What you have to avoid is all the other stuff. So any kind of refined vegetable oil, so that would be canola, um, corn oil, uh, all of those refined oils, um, starchy tubers. That's a little um, controversial. Some people on the paleo diet say that sweet potatoes are okay. Some people say that they're not. You know, the paleo people aren't telling us, so we have to guess. Um, all cereal grains and its products. So that's corn, too. That's any kind of bread. Um, quinoa, even though the Mayans used to do it, is not on this diet. Um, any kind of dairy. So there goes your calcium and your vitamin D. Um, all processed foods and sauces. So anything that comes in a jar, anything that comes in a can is not on the paleo diet. Legumes, um, so that's all our good beans and peas and lentils and, and peanuts are not on this diet. And then fruit juices, soft drinks, alcohol, and then any kind of sweets, um, salt, artificial sweeteners. So I guess my question is, if you avoided all of this, do you think you'd lose weight? I would. <laughs> I don't see donuts on here <laughs> or, or potato chips or anything like that. Um, the whole premise behind the paleo diet is that it's a protein diet, um, grass-fed, free-range. Um, some of the recommendations for paleo is that you're eating up to 65% of your diet in protein. So that's protein, breakfast, lunch, dinner, and a large proponent of it. 
Um, it is low carb and it has low glycemic index because you're choosing, if you're doing it correctly, <laughs> non-starchy uh, fresh fruits and vegetables. Um, it does have a higher fiber intake if you're doing it correctly. Um, they claim that um, there's a better ratio between omega-6 and omega-3. Omega-6, which has been thought to promote inflammation. Um, this diet has higher potassium and lower sodium intake, which is actually good. Um, those who have low potassium are associated with elevated um, blood pressure, cardiac diseases. Um, it's also thought that this diet affects the acid, base, alkaline part of your body, that if your body's more alkaline, then it may be more beneficial. And then it proposed um, a higher intake of vitamins, minerals, antioxidants, and plant phytochemicals. But I wanted to revisit this a little bit and just kind of look at some of the claims and some of the things that it proposed specific to PBC. 65% of your diet of protein is a lot of diet. One of the, well, it's a lot of uh, protein. One of the articles I read on paleo called it the diet of privilege, which I thought was interesting because meat's expensive, <laughs> protein's expensive. Um, and it's questionable in the whole hunter-gatherer era or the people that are hunter-gatherers, do they really eat protein three meals a day, every single day? And the thing is, no. They, they killed a bison, they ate it, and then, you know, they may not get a bison for another month or two. So they would eat other things. So it, it's kind of questionable if this is actually accurate. Um, it does have a lower carbohydrate intake and lower glycemic index, but to do that, it excludes some very important food groups, like the whole grain, uh, whole grains, which actually may decrease inflammation and also um, may help. It, some studies show that a higher intake of carbohydrate is linked to um, reducing cardiac disease. If you think about the Mediterranean diet, which has been in the news a lot, um, it actually in, in, uh, encourages carbohydrate intake, but the right carbohydrate in intake, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Um, this diet states that they want to have a better ratio between omega-6 and omega-3, but actually some of the foods on their diet actually have more omega-6 than omega-3. So that doesn't quite gel with what um, it supports. I still like the higher potassium and lower sodium thing. I think that's still a good thing. Um, the whole alkaline acid base um, topic is really interesting. And uh, working at a cancer facility, there's a lot of information of, I, you know, I'm doing this because I want to push my body to be more alkaline instead of acid because cancer grows in a cancer, or cancer grows in an acidic environment. But systemic pH is not influenced by diet. If you go back to high school and you remember our science, our bodies are incredible. You know, still, you don't have to go back to high school to know that. But, you know, it's when you really think about it, how amazing it is. And our blood has to be at a certain level, and our stomach has to be at a certain pH or a certain acid. And if it's not, we can get really sick. So, and you can't really affect that by what you eat. So then the question is also, well, you know, is it better on my kidneys or not? You know, it's more acidic urine doesn't necessarily mean that you're a healthier person. There's some real baseline studies that show by choosing a more plant-based diet may push your body to be a little more alkaline, but it really doesn't support overall health. Um, but then the premise of higher intake of vitamins, minerals, antioxidants, and plant phytochemicals, I think is a good thing. Um, so is, is it good for us? I have some great concerns. One, because it does eliminate calcium and vitamin D. And after sitting through that talk on osteoporosis and osteopenia, I don't know about you, but I feel like buying calcium on the way home and eating my milk and doing my yogurt. <laughs> so, so any kind of diet that eliminates whole food groups is concerning because you may turn up to be deficient. It's also high in saturated fats, which um, can increase your, in, your uh, risk for heart disease and also um, overall total cholesterol. Saturated fats are any kind of fat that's solid at room temperature. So that's butter, 